Yes! It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> Now for this year's Halloween project, to get something to look something like this, we're gonna be using some CNC stuff. So I did a little research on what a cow head looks like, and then we went ahead and designed a net, kind of like those geometry nets that you did back in elementary school where you took this cube and you folded it up to get the actual 3D object. So we're gonna take something 2D with CAD, cut it out, and turn it into something real cool, 3D-like and something spooky for Halloween. Now don't worry guys, if you don't have a CNC table, it's all good. I'm actually gonna be providing the DXF file of this net inside the weld app. So if you do have a plasma table or know someone who does, who can cut this for you, you can take this file that's inside the weld app, give it to them and they can cut this out for you. But we are gonna be using a plasma cutter today. We are gonna be using the Everlast Typhoon 220. We're gonna TIG weld a lot of it. So here's the official part list from what we got. We've got a piece of one inch tubing about 10 inches long. Could be about, doesn't even have to be 10 inches. You can make it as long as you want. And then we have some quarter inch brown stock. These are gonna be our horn tips. And then we've got another two pieces of this one inch tubing, just cut. However, about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. Those are gonna be our eye sockets. And then we have this quarter inch piece of bar right here. We're gonna cut it in half and these are gonna end up being our teeth on the inside now as far as the plasma cut goes it went okay we have one flaw here where it actually nicked it right on that circle so i would need to move that start somewhere else or make it shorter and then we also just just getting too close to comfort with some of these spots and for some reason it didn't cut this so we'll have to make this relief cut manually we got our parts mostly prepped and all cut out. We're ready to go. We just, now we gotta start the welder up. We got the Typhoon 230, man. The more I get to know this machine, the better I love it. We've run a little bit on the channel with stick. Now we're gonna be moving over to DC TIG. Look at all the features that this thing has. Pre-flow, start amps, upslope, your normal amps, your downslope, end amps, post flow. You can set your remote to all different settings, your tungsten size, your high frequency, or you got live lift TIG, which I've Oh my God, I'm so happy they finally put lift TIG, live lift TIG on here. We don't need a remote. You can actually just touch the metal and it's your lift arc without having a, a remote. I just absolutely freaking love that. Thank you, Everlast. And then as far as the pulse, so many pulse settings that we can go into and spot and fast hack, which is probably something that we're gonna really dive into more or less today. Well, it's really nice after we select our fast tack and whatever we're selecting, it keeps everything on the same screen. So every, everything that I need for this, this preset for this fast tack, I can adjust here. We're gonna go for a higher amperage at 138. Tack time, I'm sitting to 125, stitch time 50. I really have no idea what these things mean other than what a tack and what a stitch weld is. Uh, but I still have to play with this because I really don't know what all that entails. We're still going to use our remote, but again, everything's set on this one screen, so that's really tight. Uh, but let's go check it out. Let's go get some tack. Now, the fast tack, it says it gives you an additional amount of amperage or in milliseconds or whatever it may be. I don't know if that's just like real fast or I really don't know what all that means. But we're going to be running this middle bar right here. We're going to center it up. I've got some centering marks there. We're just gonna hit it. See what happens. What the heck is that? Uh, well, that's not what I anticipated was gonna happen, but it, we got a tack on there. I think I get it. Oh, it's for like welding like really thin stuff. Like for those milliseconds, I got it turned up too. Like if I had it any lower, man, we could weld like thin, thin stuff. So I think I get it now. This isn't really the application for this, this 16 gauge to eighth inch wall tubing. All right, well, let's see what happens when we switch from fast tack to just on. To, I'm guessing that's like spot welding. Let's see if this is what I was looking for before we move on. I'm just looking for that little bit of jump of amperage for just a couple seconds. 
Yeah, I like that. See, that's what I was looking for. I can hit this remote. I put my glob of metal on there. That two seconds at 150 amps just, just fuses it right to what I need. Remote down, hold it down. It goes off when I need it. Post flow is doing good. That's the spot that I was looking for. That's gonna get us tacking this thing up, right? The whole point to us putting all these relief cuts in there. Where's my hammer? Where'd I put my hammer? Oh, it's literally sitting right here. So anyway, we put those relief cuts so it'd be easier to bend when we go ahead and around something like this piece of tubing. Ooh. That's not good. Couple weak spots from the CAD. Ooh. Ooh, it's a little bit hot right there on the edge. We couldn't hold that remote down. And beef up those corners. Nice and secured in the vise now. We can kind of get that sheet metal to wrap around more organically around that pole. A piece of one inch. A couple more spot welds right on the horn. Nice. I really love this high voltage start with this machine. It's it's a little bit smoother and quieter than like the high frequency and I, I just it just feels smoother. I like that. We got that tack. Now we can start folding things. We gotta get these cheekbones around this antler and start folding, start folding things like right in this area and this area. I'm thinking we may need another relief cut cut in here because these are gonna be going under the mouth. Nothing fancy, just hammers and a little bit of gumption. Bend it till it gets around, flip it over, bend this other side. How are we gonna bend this other side? This way. Right in the same spot. Probably gonna hit a wall here. Hammer through it. You'd be surprised what you can hammer back in place or weld back. It doesn't matter if things break, you're gonna end up being able to fix it regardless. You can bend it back, whatever we gotta do. So. Got it hammered around. We pulled this back out and we're just gonna line up these corners as best we can. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can twist and try to hammer everything into shape, but again, doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna spot weld those two corners on the back end together. I kind of want this to kind of touch, like close that gap up. So we're just gonna see what happens when you hammer it. Just to, just to squeeze it. You know, that kind of gives a shape of a head, I think, maybe. We can always fill in gnarly gaps. Might have to. And then we've got this homemade crafted pipe here. It's just a piece of tubing inside a piece of tubing, but it's the perfect thing to get this shaped up better. Get everything rounded out. Watch out, camera guy. All that like 90 out stuff. This is the place to do it. Hammer it around a little bit, see what it looks like. This right here shouldn't be flat. Molly whop it. Molly whop it. Mom, look. You could probably stop here and your mom would think like, hey, that looks like a cow head. But we're gonna keep going. Next thing we're gonna add to add some eyeballs and some pop is just this little one inch piece of tubing. We'll set it off right on that hole to kind of give it some offset and some depth and we'll tack that down. Eyeballs are tacked on. We've really closed the gap right back here. Put another tack and even push this little bit around this pipe. We are gonna have a lot of gap to fill in here, but it'll be fine. This big piece stays put, but these two pieces, these are actually two pieces. We need to make a relief cut here and they need to fold down to the underside here on both sides. Another cut here and here, which I guess my program didn't cut, that's embarrassing, but we made that relief cut so that we can bend these both around like that. We can have that little bit of depth into the skull. You are probably gonna end up spending some quality time with your favorite pair of pliers on this one, but that's all it'll take is just a little bit of here and there's squeezes and pulls and tugs and then 
there you have it. You'll have basically the folded bit and then everything else is gonna be uh, shaping the antlers and adding detail to it. Now we're gonna go around and kind of reinforce all of our relief cuts. Everything is bent where we need it, where we're at. We're gonna close up the gaps. We're just gonna kind of tack everything solid. Oh, well, looky there. Might as well call yourself a cowboy yet. Yeehaw! Just got it tacked up. We got it. You're gonna, you're gonna notice that you're gonna get probably some porosity in some of these tacks. And it's just gonna happen that plasma cut is super plasma cutty and dirty and nasty. That if you don't get something in there, you're gonna get some stuff like that, that, that bit of porosity. It's gonna happen. Get a wire wheel, do something you can to get on the edges of those before you try to weld anything or just add it as the, add it as the artistic flair. It'll just give it some texture and some depth. The next thing we gotta do is shape these horns and it's my least favorite part. Now to get our horns to taper down like this and not be just a solid piece of tube, we're gonna take the plasma cutter. We got the Thermacuts uh, Extra Fire 85 right now and we're gonna take plasma cuts, some relief cuts on all four quarters and then kind of notching it out to what in the pipe fitting trades might be referred to as an orange peel, which is not really how you peel an orange, more like a banana, but that's not how, we're just gonna make it to where we have enough material removed, we can squeeze this down and then add a little piece of that quarter inch stock to add the tip and then we got the shape of our horn. That's definitely not a, a blue book textbook type of orange banana peel, but it'll get what we want. We'll squeeze all these together, hammer them together and then put that piece of quarter inch, a little piece of uh, round stock on it after we put a little tip and sharpen it with a drill and a grinder. Weld all that solid. There's gonna be hellacious, nasty gaps, but it's okay, because it's just a horn. It's art. To create these teeth, we've gotta use these quarter inch pieces of bar. We're gonna take these and secure them nice and tight in the vise. It's very important that they're in there because we're gonna be grinding some grooves with this cutoff wheel. We're gonna cut two directions so that we get the texture of these teeth. And then once we pull them out of the vise, we can kind of see how they look. We want to make sure we tack them in place and give this whole skull a nice wire wheeling so it's nice and clean for welding. We've got all the pieces assembled. They're all tacked together. We used the Typhoon 230 to do the spot and the fast tack mode. Now we're going to switch it over to just regular DC TIG, but we are going to play with that pulse. We've got a little bit of some thinner material as far as the 16 gauge goes, and we got some big gaps and some really gnarly ones on the antlers or the horns. But your mama would be super impressed if you went ahead and just gave it to her just like it is. She'd be like, oh my God, I'm so thankful that you made this. I can put this on the counter and keep the cats away from my gumbo when I'm cooking. But we're going to go for all those other people that want to fill this in and make it even look more realistic for people to be like, oh my God, is that real? Is that really a real mini bull head? And you'd be like, no, I made it out of metal. You're ignorant. No bulls are that small. So we're gonna go ahead and try to tailor to those people. We're gonna fill in all these gaps and cracks and we're gonna grind and blend everything so that we can make this thing look as real as possible. Let's switch off of our spot and fast tech. Let's turn that off. We've got our normal DC waveform right here. We can turn this pulse on and off. Get off that, move on to the pulse. Watch what happens. We normally got our start amps, upslope, downslope, end amps, and post flow. Watch what happens when we kick this thing on. What was that? Now you've got even more fine-tuned adjustments with your waveform. You can change it from your square pulse, triangle pulse, sine, or trapezoid waveform. Uh, and you know you can go in here and change the, go up to the top. We can now change our start amps, upslope, our amperage, our, our percent time spent on the, on the higher amperage side, our frequency as far as how many times a second. This can go from anywhere from one. This thing goes all the way up to five freaking hundred. And then we got our the amount of time spent on the lower end as far as the percentage. And your downslope, end amps, and post flow. We got all our settings ready to go. We got 85 amps with a 50 50 split and about the disco meter set to about seven uh, per second, pulses a second. Let's get this disco montage started. These welds don't have to be pretty. They just gotta be closing up this, the bits and the holes. Again, you're probably gonna get some porosity or something, but it's okay. We're gonna blend and grind everything. If you wanna fill in those holes, you can. I like them. I think it adds to the aesthetic of a cow skull, uh, but it seems that the, on the horns more, I'm definitely favoring a higher amperage and a higher pulse rate. 
Whereas compared to the thinner sheet metal that I'm going for a lower amps and a lower pulse rate, or maybe I don't even change the amperage, I just change the percent of time spent on the higher end of things. But other than that, the playing with this thing is real fun. Yeah, you know, I'm tired of the disco party now. Now that, that's one fancy typhoon. That thing's got a bunch of really cool settings that I haven't even scratched the surface out of. But these welds, they don't have to be pretty. They don't have to be gorgeous. They don't have to have to be custom. Hell, I even welded it with a messed up tungsten just to spite you all, because they don't have to be pretty. We're gonna grind them all off and spit shine it. Now it's got all the welds on there. Again, you can even stop at this point, but it looks really dirty right now, so. We're going to hog on it with a grinding disc, just a regular old grinding disc all the way around, get all the welds flattened up, maybe even use a bit of a die grinder to get around these eyes and kind of shape the sockets up a little bit. And then we're going to take the plasma cutter over here and we're just going to add some detail lines just in a couple little spots so that it adds kind of some of that, the shapes of the original skull lines from where everything is all scully and connecty and, you know, doctor's physician type words. So. Once that's done, it's going to look great. Got the rough grind on there and the plasma cuts in. Now we're going to do our last step and take this drill and a punch, make some holes into next to the eye sockets of this sucker and then kind of pry it out. I really don't know what those things are, but I think they look pretty sharp when you put them on there. And then we'll do a little bit of a finish grind on the entire project. Now, this is an optional step and you may not look as good as me because I took some creative grinding classes in community college. So we're going to make sure that this thing looks Real nice. Boom. And that's it for these mini cow skull builds, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you want to build one of these yourself, go check out the Weld app. I've got the DXF files and the cut list and every, all the directions that you need to make one of these on your own. I really do think these are a nice, easy project. You could TIG them, you can MIG them. And this is a great beginner one. And it's just a, a net that you just fold right up. So check out the Weld app, find this video, download it, and then you'll be able to make your own cow skull. Happy Halloween, everyone. Stay safe.